How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? This is Jeff Benjamin. Welcome to this toast-free episode of 9 to 5 Max, Back to the Mac, episode number five. On this week's episode, no complaining, at least for the first five minutes or so, I promise you. Because this week, we're talking all about Safari. More specifically, talking about some of my favorite Safari tips for Mac. Now, obviously, if you use Safari on a day-in, day-out basis, I'm expecting you to know some of these tips. But my goal, my hope, my every wish is that you don't know them all so that I would not have made this video for nothing. So hopefully you learn at least a couple of new things in this episode of Back to the Mac. Now this isn't technically a Safari tip, but it is very handy if you use uh, Spotlight Search and you don't use a Spotlight replacement like Alfred, which I've talked about in a previous episode. So this tip shows how you can invoke a web search in Safari directly from Spotlight. So let's test this out. If I open up Spotlight, put in my search query, you can see where it's searching for previously viewed stuff. So it has bookmarks and history out there. It's also searching for items directly on my Mac. That's all well and fine. But what if I wanted to search on the web using a Google search or whatever my default search engine is? Well, to do so, you need to use the command plus B keyboard shortcut. So again, command plus B and that will open up your default browser and use your default search engine to search for the query. There's a lot of ways to cycle through tabs in Safari. Of course, you can use your mouse and just click to each tab you wanna to go to, or you can use one of several keyboard shortcuts. So if I hold the command key and press the number of the tab that I want to go to, I can navigate directly to that tab. So for instance, if I wanna go directly to electric, I can simply hold the command key and press three since it's the third tab like this. If I wanna to go to nine to five Mac, I hold command and press the one key like that. Now you can also cycle through tabs just like you would normally cycle through apps using command tab like this. Let me show you how. All you need to do is hold the control key and then press tab like that. So now you can quickly cycle through tabs just that easily. If you know you always want to keep a particular website or a set of websites open, then try pinning your tabs. So to pin a tab, all you need to do is right click on it like this and select pin tab. Once you do that, the tab is going to appear on the left side of the browser and it will be represented by its favicon or a representation of its favicon using the first letter of the website name instead of text, which is kind of nice. So the nice thing about pin tabs is that it's persistent. So even when you close out of the browser or even when you select close other tabs like this, that pin tab still remains. And you can open that up just like that. And like I said, if you close out of the browser and then you reopen the browser, Guess what still appears there? Yes, your pin tab is still there, ready to go. Have you ever been searching for a tab that's making noise and it's super annoying? Maybe there's a YouTube video playing in the background or just some music or an auto-playing ad. Super annoying, right? Well, you can easily find out which tab that is in Safari. Safari makes it super easy to find the tab that's making noise on your Mac. All you need to do is look for the tab with the speaker icon next to it. So in this case, it's easy to see that it's this tab right here that is making the noise. And I can go in and mute that or deal with it however I want to deal with it. And you can also mute a tab or mute all tabs in one fell swoop. Now say you want to mute these tabs using the built-in Safari controls. You can just go in and simply click on the speaker icon next to each tab like that. Or if you're on a separate tab and there's multiple tabs making noise, you can kill all the noise in one fell swoop by clicking the speaker icon in the address bar like that. Now say you want to quit Safari, but you want to keep all of your open windows in place for the next time you open the app. What to do then? Let me show you. Now, when you want to close out of Safari, normally you would just click the close button or go up to the Safari menu, select quit Safari or use command Q. But watch what happens when I hold the option key. Notice what that turns into. Now it says quit and keep windows. That's very handy. So now if I select that option or use option command Q like this, I can close out of Safari, but watch what happens when I reopen it. All of my windows are retained in their exact place. Pretty handy. Now with Safari, you can easily invoke the grid mode to show all of your tabs at once. But did you know that that mode also allows you to quickly search through all your tabs? Let me show you. 
So the ability to show all tabs at the same time is super handy. All you need to do is click the show all tabs button in the upper right hand corner like that. And that gives you a nice bird's eye view of everything that's open so you can easily find what you're looking for. But what if you have a ton of tabs open and you really need to find something quick? Well, simply type to start searching. So let me show you. Just type D-R-O-N-E, Drone DJ opened up like that. Or I can search for nine to five Mac. So I could say nine, two, five, Mac, like that, and pull up nine to five Mac on YouTube. One of the first things I do when I install Mac OS is to enable the status bar in Safari. Without the status bar enabled, you can't really see where you'll end up if you click a link. So to enable the status bar, simply go up to the view menu and select show status bar. Now with the status bar enabled, when you mouse over a link like this, you can see where it will take you. I also like to reveal the full website URL in the address bar. By default, Safari likes to be cute, so it will hide the full URL of a web page you're currently on in the address bar. Now it's easy to reveal the full URL simply by clicking in the address bar, but that requires action on the user's part, and it's kind of inconvenient when you just want to glance and see where you may be. So to enable the full URL by default, all you need to do is go up to the menu bar, click Safari, select preferences, click the advanced tab, and then select where it says show full website address. When you do that, the full website address will appear, making it easy to see where exactly you are at a glance. Now, have you ever wanted to clear your history, but you wanna keep all of your cookies and website data? Well, you can do so easily. All you need to do is go up to the Safari menu and instead of selecting clear history, hold the option key first. And there you go. You see clear history and keep website data. So this will keep website data, will not remove cookies, and you can choose the, the time frame that you want to do so for. So you can select clear in the last hour, today, today, and yesterday, or all history. And this will do so yet retain all of your website data. You can also establish per site settings, which is super handy for things like reader mode and allowing permissions to things like your camera, etc. To access per site settings, simply right click on the address bar and select settings for this website. And there you can quickly access things like use reader when available and autoplay options, etc. But you can also go to Safari's preferences and then go to the websites tab and then find all the different per website settings there. So you can set per website location settings, microphone settings, camera settings, uh, reader settings, etc. By utilizing keyboard modifiers, you can really take control of the way new tabs are opened in Safari. To open a link in a new tab in the background, just command click like that. Now, if you want to open that link in a new tab and make it the active tab, hold the shift key while command clicking like this. Now command option click will open that in a new window like this. Command option shift click will open in a new window and make it the active window like this. So that has been a look at a dozen tips for Safari on the Mac. Hopefully you were able to learn something new in this video. Let me know down below if there's any tips that you didn't know that you learned and also let me know if you have any tips that you'd like to share. Now, as we get closer and closer to spring, the tech news cycle is starting to ramp up and pick up speed, thankfully. According to KGI Securities, we should expect a MacBook Air refresh, an actual refresh, not just an incremental spec bump, but an actual refresh in quarter two, 2018, which means you're talking about April, May, or June, which is really close, right? So that's exciting. The MacBook Air finally being relevant again. It's kind of odd to think about that, but according to KGI, we should see a new MacBook refresh in quarter two. Now there's no real concrete details about the refresh, but the most obvious thing is a retina display, right? Um, and maybe getting those bezels reduced. Nine to five Max Ben Lovejoy comments that a more affordable MacBook Air would be like the new iBook from back in the day. Now with this in mind, it's quite possible that we could see a MacBook Air price decrease, which would make it even more appealing to students and the like. Now we shouldn't expect the MacBook Air to venture into Chromebook territory because that's just not Apple style. However, 
as been conjectures, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibilities for us to see a $750, even a $600 MacBook Air entry-level model. What do you guys think? And like we do each year, 9to5Mac Zach Hall has provided a post that outlines all the big hardware releases that we should expect this year. That means everything from air power to the iPhone SE 2 to the upgraded iPhone X2 or X medium or whatever it's gonna be called in the future. And of course, we also have the modular Mac Pro. Maybe we'll see that as well. And then lastly, I wanted to remind you guys that we are running our huge annual spring cleaning giveaway right now. That means a huge box with tons of stuff in it ready to be yours just by following the directions on the giveaway. So be sure to check that out for more details. So the first thing we have here is the Oloclip Filmers Kit. And when they say kit, they really mean kit because it has a ridiculous amount of lenses inside this thing. You have a fisheye lens, a super wide lens, a macro 15X lens, an ultra wide lens, a telephoto lens, and then you have the grip and you also have this case from Encase. And that way you won't do like I tend to do and lose one of your lenses. Pretty awesome. Now the next item that we have here is inside this DHL bag, inside this Timex box. Um, okay, what is that? But something tells me this isn't the official box for this product, but that doesn't matter because as you'll see here, this product is really, really cool. It is from Mantis. This is the same people that make the Mantis Venus external GPU. This is a Thunderbolt 3 enabled display dock. This is called the Mantis Titan. And as you can see, you have dual display port connections for two displays at 4K at 60 Hertz. You have HDMI, you have USB, you have ethernet, and it's all in this nice slim and trim aluminum package. Check back soon for reviews of both. Now we have two winners from last week's Back to the Mac software giveaway. And the first winner is Fog Upon LA. And the next winner is Nice Shy Guy. So congratulations to those two individuals. So guys, please be sure to reply to my request on Instagram for more details on how to claim your prize. And because people appear to like the software giveaways, we're gonna go ahead and do it again. We're giving away two additional copies of Flume Pro for the Mac. This is that awesome Instagram app for the Mac. So again, to enter, all you need to do, head over to our Instagram page, make sure you like the post related to Back to the Mac episode number five, and leave a comment. That's it. And then I'll pick somebody at random. So ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this episode of Back to the Mac. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a thumbs up. If you did not enjoy it, you can leave a thumbs down too. Be sure to subscribe for more videos. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.